Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to talk about everything that's happening in and around the city of Missoula in terms of Missoula, state, and even some national news as well as some of the weather that's happening. I'll talk about weather in a little bit. I got a pre-critic. I got um, guests on to talk about Sunday Streets, Missoula, and Walk and Roll Week. Um, I also have uh, some city council where they're going to be talking about the process moving forward and removing the Rattlesnake Dam and more. Um, I got uh, two art clips that are going to be playing their last times on uh, my morning show. So um, you guys only have one more day after today to check out some of the art installations at the Missoula Art Museum before they change it over the weekend. So I'll get to do that in a little bit more a little bit later. But let's talk about some of the weather that's going to be happening. Let me just adjust this just a little bit. See if we can get a good image going on here. All right, so uh, currently it is 45 degrees outside. You have that high of 49, so it's going to be pretty cold, but you have that rain that's happening today as well. So you may want to um, avoid maybe some of the rain because some of the particulate matter that are in the air might be within the rain. So you may want to avoid any kind of uh, drinking of the rainwater, which you should always do anyways. Um, the low is going to be 35 today. Uh, your high for Saturday is going to be 58. That uh, chance of rain is going to lower down to 30 percent and then Saturday night is going to be partly cloudy with Sunday being a high 68 degrees partly sunny day for uh, the walk and roll uh, kickoff event Sunday streets. So uh, with that weather, um, it also is affecting um, the Lolo Peak fire as well. So far a tenth of an inch is not enough to put out the fire. Uh, but of course it is enough to uh, prevent a lot of the spread of the fire. Uh, but with trees that cover areas with fires are still burning, uh, a lot of work are being done by crews up at Lolo Fire. Uh, it, but of course, it is a nice break, but still, there's so much to do. The fire has grown, and we have Operation Section Chief Mike Ranger to give a nice little update about where the fire is right now. And this is from Lolo National Park on their Facebook page. Up here on the map, you see it finally connected. And so we've been talking about this a long time. Will it connect or not? Well, it ha has, and so this is kind of proves the point that what we've been doing over here ha was dictated by what was happening on the fire on this side here. So on this side, down here in the Brushy Creek area, Brushy Fork, fire moved down to our roads, has been holding in there, and the crews were real active in there yesterday. I've always said we'll fight this fire on our terms and not the fire's terms, and for the last 50, 60 days, it's been the fire's term. This thing just stood up and rocked about every day. It's been very hard to get in on, uh, close to the fire and kick it. And so, but today or yesterday, we were able to do that. So they were in here mopping up yesterday all along Division Bravo and Division Alpha. And they mopped it up really hard. We had hand crews in there, both the guard and our type two hand crews in there. All right, so basically later on, he, um, you can watch the full thing later on, on online as well. He, they give an update, an evening update and a morning update for the fire pretty much every day for the last couple weeks. So that's where I got this um, clip from. A lot of mop-up work in the southernmost part of the fire. There's, but uh, they're, Right now they're at the monitoring phase. They will drive by and make sure that these areas don't spread any further. But for the most part, they're going to protect um, the areas in which it's encroaching on to the, Flor the city of Florence and those areas as well. So, of course, so far the fire stands at uh, uh, 53,436 acres, 488 people are uh, manning the fire, 46% contained, and they estimate that the containment day uh, will be October 31st um, is when they will be able to contain the fire. So uh, that's what's happening in um, Missoula and in, in Florence and the nearby areas for the Lolo Peak Fire. Um, let's talk about some state news and kind of switch gears. Two Bozeman historians are, supp uh, are supporting tribal groups call for removal of Gustavez, uh, Chene, uh, uh, Doan's name from uh, the Mount Mountain of Yellowstone National Park on Saturday, representatives of Mountain of Blackfoot um, Confederacy and uh, Great Sioux Nation will gather uh, at Yellowstone's iconic Roosevelt Arch at 1 p.m. to protest the geographical references to Doan and uh, 
for Nanded uh, Hayden, a uh, historical figure is tied to the park that they say had racist and in Doan's uh, case violent past. Doan was a lieutenant under Major Eugene Baker's command when the U.S. Army killed an estimated 200 members of the Mountain Chiefs um, pa uh, Pagan Blackfoot tribe in Mo Mount Montana Territory on January 23, 1870. The camp was mainly composed of old people, women, and children, many of whom were suffering from smallpox. The event is known as Baker uh, Pegan and uh, Marias Massacre. In the wake of the Nationalist rally that turned violent in Charlottesville, Virginia, the Helena City Council decided in August to remove a downtown uh, fountain erected in 1916 by the United Daughters of Confederacy to honor Civil War soldiers who fought for Southern Six, uh, Secession. Uh, members of the American Indian Caucus in the Montana legislature has requested the statue be taken down, saying it, it stood for segregation, uh, secession, and slavery. On um, Saturday, the protesters will call for Hayden Valley to be named Buffalo Nation Valley in honor of all tra tribal nations that have treaty rights and interests to uh, Greater Yellowstone and an ancestral connection to the sacred landscape and the, and the relatives, the Buffalo Nation, said uh, Brandon Sazu of the Crow uh, Creek Sioux Tribe and Chief Greer in a press release. And this is from the Billings Gazette. So in the national news, um, the hurricanes, there might be another hurricane on the horizon for the Florida area. Jose is forecast to become a hurricane on uh, basically today, people who live along the U.S. East Coast from North Carolina up to New England should monitor tropical storm Jose. Forecasters say that the storm winds won't get close to land until Sunday or Monday, but expected to become a hurricane by Friday. So um, many places have already been hit by uh, different hurricanes. Harvey hit Texas and a lot of the uh, southernmost uh, Gulf, Gulf states. And then while um, Irma hit uh, Florida and a lot of those uh, uh, states along the coast as well, but now you got to see another um, Hurricane Jose, which will be basically something that will be constantly monitored. Um, so um, here is a nice little representation of the map as well. So you can kind of see the idea of the movement and the patterns just moving forward. So uh, basically, it looks like it's going to be growing to these areas right around here. So I got this from NPR.org. Of course, it'll be um, constantly monitored by the National Weather Services. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I have an art clip for you guys. And when I come back, I'm going to have Lindsay Norman and Catherine Auger. And they're going to be talking about Sunday streets and a, a lot of fun activities that will be happen happening in Missoula on Sunday when they close Higgins Bridge. Welcome back. Lindsay Norman and Catherine Auger are here. They're program specialists with um, the Walk and Roll Week, Sunday Streets Missoula, and all around just working with Missoula in Motion to help promote uh, basically not driving. That's the whole idea. Is like you bike, you can walk, and which is what uh, Sunday is going to do is basically you're going to kick off um, Walk and Roll Week. So well, let's talk about some of the events that are happening on Sunday to kick it all off. 
Yes, so Sunday Streets Missoula is our open street initiative where we close down Higgins Avenue from the X's to Fifth Street and just kind of line it with free and fun activities that people of all ages can enjoy. Um, so some of the activities include, um, we're having yoga on the bridge, we're gonna have a tango dancing class, the, the skateboarders at Edge of the World are gonna set up a big half pipe and do some skating. Um, there's just gonna be like, there's the Missoula Fencing Company is coming, so. Um, lots of fun stuff that really everyone can enjoy. So we're really looking forward to it. It's completely free and um, lots of fun for everyone. And uh, MissoulaInMotion.com is where you guys can go to find out all the information about all the events that are happening as well. Just a quick little access to see it all and whatnot. So um, with Sunday Streets uh, happening, which, which Sunday Streets is this? How many times have you guys done Sunday Streets? So this is the 12th one. We've been wow. doing it since 2008. So what is the what is your favorite part about Sunday Streets? I think really just kind of seeing the community come together. Um, it really is a beloved community event. Last year we had over 10,000 people attend, which is almost 12% of our population. So um, I think it's, it's just really kind of an open opportunity for people of all incomes, all ages. And um, we really just like to see that it's a car-free space. It's um, an, an event where we really take back the street to the people and um, just really enjoy ourselves. So. But not only is uh, Sunday Streets um, kind of like uh, its own event, but also it also is going to be kind of kick it off Walk and Roll Week. So which one of you want to talk about Walk and Roll Week? I'll talk about that part. Um, yeah, so Sunday Streets is kicking off um, our week long of deals, discounts, and events to promote sustainable transportation. Um, so at Sunday Streets, people will be asked to take the pledge to be one less car on Missoula's first ever one less car day, which will be September 20th, so that's next Wednesday. Um, so we're really trying to make that link with sustainable transportation at Sunday Streets. Um, and just to clarify, we're not anti-driving, we're anti-driving alone. So we really like to emphasize that we're not anti-car, we also promote carpooling um, and taking the van pool along with biking, walking, and busing. And I know that um, Missoula Motion were also like had an initiative just this last year moving forward on finding alternative ways of transportation and you have a very interactive website when it comes to that as well. Yeah, definitely. So we have um, an online trip planner, so it allows you to see all of your different transportation options. You put in where you're starting from and where you're going to, and you can see how long each one takes you, um, how much it costs, how many calories you burn, if it's an active mode. Um, so it's really helpful because you can see you know, all the bus routes in one place along with um, different bike routes depending on level of comfort. So if you're more comfortable biking on bigger streets, you can look at those routes, or if you're less comfortable being in the road, you can look at the ones that focus more on the trails. So, um, Sunday Streets um, basically is going from 12 to 4 p.m. on Sunday, which is why it's called Sunday Streets. Yes. And it's going to be basically closing down Higgins, um, but there's going to be some uh, throughways a couple times through like Broadway and whatnot. Yes, so Broadway and Fifth Street are both going to remain open to cars, so we'll have um, cross guards that are kind of monitoring Broadway just to make sure that people are only crossing the street with the light, um, but other than that, it'll be completely car free. Wow. I mean, and it goes basically from um, w w like the red X's? Yes. All the way till like Big Dipper? To Fifth Street, so yeah, I think one block past Big Dipper. Wow. Yep, and we're going to have um, the Missoula Parkour is going to be set up down uh, Unparalleled Movement, I believe is what they're mm -hmm. called, down at um, the X's, and so they're going to kind of use the X's as part of their activity, and then um, we'll have Edge of the World over at Fifth Street kind of as the other bookend. Cool. So uh, what other events are happening that you guys kind of want to talk about before we uh, wrap up? Yeah, so for Walk and Roll Week, we have um, different themed deals every day. So um, there are different local businesses giving out discounts and freebies. So Mondays, for example, is Muffin Monday, Taco Tuesday. <laughs> um, so those are all on our website. And then there's a, um, on Wednesday for One Less Car Day, we have a commuter breakfast blitz. Um, so we'll have 10 different free breakfast stations set up at different places around town. Um, so see if one is on your normal commute if you're biking or walking or busing to work. Um, and you'll get free coffee and breakfast treats. Um, there's also two big events. We have um, one on Tuesday is on the Unseen Missoula Tour. So the Historical Preservation um, Society or Commission um, is organizing it and it'll be a tour of some of the um, tunnels under downtown. Um, and so that will be really cool and seeing some things, some places that you may not even know 
existed. And then there's also an amazing race, which uh, Mountain Lion is coordinating, and that's on Thursday. So teams can sign up and um, see if you can get from point A to point B using sustainable transportation. Um, and then there's prizes and all sorts of fun fun things along with that. And also you guys um, are going to be at the university for Walk and Roll Week as well? Yeah, they're partnering with us as well. So they all have um, a different raffle um, prize giveaway every single day. So every day you commute sustainably, you can check in in the UC and enter a raffle. And then they'll also have a breakfast split station and a couple other things going on too. Because I always remember that uh, during Walk and Roll Week, which used to be called Bike, Bok, Bike walk. Bus Walk, yeah. Same thing. <laughs> yes. Um, that you got, that people, uh, you got representatives, bike ambassadors, um, would stand on the corners and hand out like coupons and this and that. And of course, there's a couple other sponsors that also do some stuff. And I know that uh, Taco del Sol also does a sponsoring event for Walk and Roll and has done in the past. It's like, did you walk here? Well, you can get some money off of a burrito or something. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of that. So yeah, every day there's a different theme. So. Check our, check our list online for the different businesses participating, but yeah. All right, so if you want more information, go to MissoulaMotion.com. They'll bring you to all the links to basically everything that you need to know about Walk and Roll Week, including Sunday Streets and more. So is there anything else you guys One want to say? One last thing. We have our big bike palooza which is Missoula's biggest bike ride, and that is taking place Saturday. So that's going to kind of be the end um, big event for Walk and Roll Week. So we hope people can make it. It's at 2 p.m. and it's leaving from Free Cycles, and they're also doing their Festival of Cycles that day. So we really want to get a lot of people. It'll be a five-mile, family-friendly ride. So hopefully people can make it. Cool. Well, thanks, guys, for joining me. Um, if you want more information, go to uh, MissoulaMotion.com. And uh, we'll be right back right after this. When people are put in vulnerable situations, they might think that nobody will notice or care. So a bystander has the power to make them feel not alone and to foster a community where people care about others' well-being. Oftentimes when we think about intervention, we think that it needs to be a major response, when in reality, checking in on the situation, providing distraction, and allowing the person to be able to get to safety um, is the only thing that's needed. Bars are really the perfect audience for sexual violence prevention training because bartenders are seeing a lot of problematic behavior in their bars when people are really drunk. And there are a lot of people that are wanting to take advantage of how intoxicated people are in bars. So bartenders have a lot of power in intervening. There's a lot of responsible bar owners and bartenders out there that want to do everything that they can to reduce any kind of violence or headaches in the community. They're on the front line. They need more uh, education. This only is effective with our community. If we have three people who are against rape, that really doesn't get the job done. We need 300,000, 3 million, 300 million people against rape. I've got a five-year-old little girl, and it would be uh, irresponsible to not fund uh, work like this. Uh, at some point, she's going to be 18 and 21, and you know she'll be an adult, and she's going to be in the environment you know that we're talking about here and we need to invest in
And those are some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT starting um, this weekend. Uh, MCPS uh, spring concerts are going to be airing as long uh, uh, this weekend as well. That though that will air on Sunday. So let's talk about some movies that are going to be coming out this weekend. Uh, um, Aronofsky is doing yet another movie, and if you don't remember him from Black Swan, you should <laughs> definitely know him from Mamma Mia 2, or as I like to call it, Mother. Mother is a movie that has Jennifer Lawrence in it, and if that doesn't sell it to you, then that's basically all they've been marketing pretty much. Uh, it's one of those movies that you, you, you think to yourself, it's like, is this what? Uh, what? Uh, yes. Oh, oh, okay. So anyways, this is uh, sure to compete with uh, the movie It, apparently. Uh, for some r things that are critically acclaimed, there are always some movies that just don't live up to the hype. Mind you that the, since this movie It is a horror film, first and foremost, it's be uh, become clear that the only way to make a good movie is, to make a mo is not to make a movie at all. Uh, basically, this movie follows a woman who is married to a man who gathers a cult following like a legitimate cult where they gather and become children of Jennifer Lawrence, which is why they call her mother, with an exclamation point. Um, but of course, I'd rather watch the movie It for a second time. Moving on to the next movie. Um, yep, not another American blah, blah, blah movie. It's like American blank, American this, American that, American this, and American that. There's always seems to be uh, uh, movies that always have to have the word American in it. And, of course, it will probably be doing well in the uh, box office. But if you don't go to this movie, you're not American, obviously. Uh, when an adorable couple are attacked and one of these insert female love interests here to motivate the revenge plot dies, it's up to a man who must go undercover in a terrorist group to kill the boss of the guy who has killed the insert love interest here. Um, watch as he trains under a... Uh, a mentor who knows more than he teaches, which is kind of stupid because I thought once you learn everything from your mentor, it's just like, okay, you're ready to go. You're out in the world. But like any movie, like there's a um, twist plot. It's like, why never, how come you never showed me this? It's like, well, that's a whole nother level of training. It's like, what? what? I thought you, the whole point of me having this training is that that's kind of how a lot of these me mentors and movies are always being done. It's always like, oh, we don't have enough time to train you. We're just going to trial by fire and that kind of thing. It was like, hmm. That's usually what's going to happen. Expect this to happen in American Assassin, um, which will probably end in like him defeating like a big bad guy and then like his mentor or somebody dying. That's another important figure in his life. And then he basically becomes his own personal blah, blah, blah. Anyways, up next, we got a Ben Stiller movie. Uh, have you ever uh, wondered whatever happened to Ben Stiller uh, after a night at the museum movies? Um, no, no, I haven't either. But, well, let's follow Ben Stiller in this new comedy about a man who's helping his son overachieve him in life as they go to call on a college road trip um, and meet with friends of Brad, um, Ben Stiller's character, uh, as they make fun of his life's choices um, or Brad's status. Uh, stars some familiar faces with a bunch of folks who are kind of typecasted for certain roles. Um, watch this heartwarming Hallmark original movie, movie with a big budget attempt to convince they have big hearts. So, yeah, I mean, that's basically it for free, Kroder. Um Thanks, uh, thanks for joining me. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm not ending my show quite yet. But here is a nice little PSA. When I come back, I'm going to give you a little update on some city council stuff. Um, the internet is basically kind of running slow, so I'm not able to show you some clips. So I'll be able to go over some city council pretty quickly. Um, so I'll return right after this. Hey, hey, how's it going over? Uh, oh, have a good day. <laughs> Oh, huh, I didn't see you over there. What a nice day to be out and about today. But I want to tell you something about what's going on here. Hold on a second, let me just adjust this. Okay, there you go. Let me talk about MCAT. MCAT is doing Saturday drop-ins starting every Saturday this fall, winter, and spring season from 1 to 5 p.m. Let's go check it out, come on. MCAT is a great way to create. All you gotta do is come on down to our location at 500 North Higgins. It's as easy as that. See you there. Yeah, I mean, the thing that really bothers me about that particular video is that he takes the time to adjust the camera only to switch camera to a wide shot. 
anyways, that's just me. Uh, let's talk about some city council stuff. So in the city of Missoula, they were talking about the dam removal. Um, so what is moving forward with these plans is that they have this meeting and they're talking about basically, I mean, what I've already been to told you is like, I could probably just end it right there, but I'm going to talk a little bit more details in terms of this. So basically what's been what, a dam that's been up there for 70 years that most people are just like, oh, I didn't know Rattlesnake even had a dam in the first place. That's basically it. They, they're they just basically saying, it's like, oh, yeah, there's a dam. It's like, oh, there's a dam? It's like, yes, it was a whole plot point for us moving forward with the condemnation of the Mountain Water Company. It's like, oh, okay. And, and I'm sure most people probably forget that m the city of Missoula um, sued the water company to get the water acquisition stuff, like, a year or two from now. Most people don't even know about it now. So, anyways, that's just a lot of background for a thing that – that, but of course, the area which Rattlesnake Dam uh, property has been in uh, between the city and forest services, uh, bull trout, cutthroat, and various fish live in the areas along with bears and mountain lions. With such wild presence and clean water for um, something that's so close to Missoula to be uh, basically blocked through a dam, and right now, a lot of times they made a gate in the middle to open the dam, but that was made a long time ago, and when it the whole point of it is that basically funnels the water through there, which makes it hard for uh, fish to str uh, go upstream to spawn. So they've basically had to make fish ladders, had to adjust, build on top of it, more and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Many of the current issues people face using these areas are designated for people versus the old property that uh, forced trails to be too small for uh, groups to travel through. Along with the city's acquisition of the water company, Trout Unlimited, Parks and Recreation, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Park are big players in restoration of these areas. Um, there's a lot of support for this project, and the city hopes to move forward, but are in the planning phase um, only right now. So... Uh, Basically, the dam memorandum of agreement, it's not an understanding. It's the purpose in, of the agreement is to outline the parties, individuals, and collective objectives, roles, and responsibilities associated with project planning for mitigating effects of the dam and rest, is restoring Rattlesnake Creek. Um, so the whole idea of the project is that uh, Trout Unlimited and Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, along with the city, are going to be working together to f um, come up with a solution. But right now, they're going to go to the side and be like, okay, we can do this. We can't do this. Okay, there are going to be a lot of sediments if we do that. So basically, they're just going to do like an EPA kind of report to see whether or not what's the best solution to take down the thing as well. They might have to do it in phases. So they take out the main dam part in a huge phase. They take out the side part later. And then they'll have to, because they have a built-up pond there where they do like a fishery and stuff like that. So one of the things they're trying to do is just try to ba basically remove everything whatsoever. And another quote that Marilyn Marler said that I would have showed you in this meeting is that she said that um, money that w was going to the area was basically going into uh, um, the cabin and the grassland, like basically just basic maintenance stuff, thousands of dollars, um, in which they're basically going to stop using altogether and just ultimately basically tear everything down in the area and just ma basically make it in into a park so a, lo a lot of elizabeth erickson with the um open space bond she's she's the one who um, works with the open space bond and um determining whether or not it's a um whether or not uh, an area is suitable for an open space for people to go out and recreate and be able to have public land for people in Missoula just to go out and just enjoy nature. And this is a beautiful place. I was there, and it's such a weird area, too, because up Rattlesnake, there's so many mysterious turns and curves and stuff like that. So that's one of the things they definitely talked about during this meeting. They had two parks and conservation meetings, which I am also going to be talking about. This is the second parks and conservation meeting that happened in the afternoon, which highlighted the Missoula County Missou City Missoula City Cemetery, and they're uh, moving forward with their update of their ordinance uh, when it comes to updating their fee schedules and fees and stuff like that. So one of the things that they uh, wanted to do is they wanted to be able to sell monuments because back in the day, back in 2002, to be pr uh, particular, um, um, the city of Missoula decided not to sell monuments anymore, and. Uh, at the, for the last couple of years, uh, the city of Missoula or the new owner of the, uh, actually not uh, the new uh, director of the Missoula City Cemetery was just like, hey, we got to update this ordinance. It's kind of old. Let's see what we can do. It was like, maybe we can bring back the monuments we had in the past. But there was a lot of uh, uh, 
pushback when it came to the Missoula uh, Chamber of Commerce and also the uh, um, Garden City Funeral Home and Sunset Memorial Services when they basically uh, made a letter to, for the city of Missoula to cease and desist um, their activities. Uh, they didn't want to have any direct competition with the city of Missoula because the city of Missoula, uh, they say in their quotes, is that the city of Missoula um, city council should govern and they should not go into the memorial selling businesses so a lot of times they wanted to figure out little thing of uh, this and that of course the city approved a motion to update an ordinance but they wanted to be able to update fees liner costs and to adjust it to market prices with but all but also and to improve services to help people basically um, make it a lot easier for them to um, bury a loved one in the Missoula um, city cemetery. It's a small little parcel of land, but it also caused a big controversy in the city of Missoula in terms of business and whatnot. So the uh, Garden City a Funeral Home is happy, and uh, everyone is happy with how everything worked out. And the city did move a little bit forward on I updating their ordinance. So this is uh, something that um, will not basically be discussed for another maybe couple of years, but you never know. That's the thing about uh, government is that it constantly changes. And there is, uh, uh, um, and uh, we did have uh, some people on on Missoula Live just recently uh, where they are talking about the voting. And of course, uh, there is going to be a lot of spots available. Um, half of the wards will be, uh, have the the election um, all basically half the wards um, so there's two uh, city council members per ward and half of them are up for re-election oh, and um, there's two seats up in ward two because uh, Ruth Swaney took over for Harlan Wells when he left for another job in Helena or something um, and so th their two seats uh, Jordan Hess and Ruth Swaney's seat are up in ward two um, Jordan Hess is running unopposed and I, I don't know if the um, deadline to uh, submit to uh, basically to run in the race is over yet. So if you want more information about the city uh, city council meetings and to watch these, uh, because I kind of gave you a, uh, an overview, it was kind of long-winded, <laughs> to be honest. But um, if you want to go and find out more information, go to ci. Missoula.mt.us. Um, it is a great uh, resource f to find out everything Missoula and what's going on here. It looks like they updated uh, some new pictures of the marketplaces and Missoula areas, which is very nice. Um, I really like a lot of these uh, pictures that they have on the city's website. It kind of shows what Missoula is all in a nutshell. So um, if you want more information about that, you go to ci.missoula.mt.us. Again, you can go to mcat.org to watch these meetings as well. So if you have any problems with uh, watching um, city council meetings on the website, you can always go to channel 190, and it brings you to our video on demand page, and you can watch any of these videos at any time and it's always updated from the most recent to the least. So um, MCAT.org is your resource. Um, every Wednesday at 5.30 we have orientation so if you want to get involved um, um, basically learn video we do it every single Wednesday. Um, to find out more information about my morning show you, you can find me wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. Um, I post all my videos and past interviews that I've done in my show, including some fun little videos that I've made with uh, some um, of, of our summer series, which has ended. So you could see some of our Friday uh, kids videos. We also have Wednesday dubbing stuff. But of course, all these interviews that I've done in the past, you can always see that. But I always uh, want to promote my stop motion entire series, which I may bring back. Um, starting sometime in October for uh, my um, Wednesday morning stop motion series, and I might actually kill dub and stuff because I really I'm not really a big fan of dub and stuff, and I don't know, put much effort into it as well. So that's just me going on a little rant here and there. So I am going to throw it to an art clip, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this art clip real quick. Uh, this is an art clip from Maggie uh, Hiltner. Hiltner, uh, what lives? what lies beneath and this is going to be running until Saturday at 5 p.m. this and the other one which was um, Keith uh, uh, Go Goodhart which is a Portland po uh, portrait of Atlas so both of those um, art um, installations of the Missouri Museum are ending so here's the last time I get to play this art clip and when I come back I'm gonna talk about events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula for this weekend. There's a lot going on, so I'll, I'll try to speed through it as fast as possible and we can get our Friday going off right. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. So let's kick some things off. It is the 2017 Parade of Homes and Remodeling Tour. Um, Missoula Building um, Industry Association in 1989, a small group of Missoula Building Industrial Association members decided to organize a Parade of Homes to feature some of the best, most beautiful living arrangements in Missoula. In the years since, the Parade of Homes and Remodeling Tour has been a hallmark event for the building industry. Since it's been beginning, the event has featured 200 living spaces from large-scale custom abodes to how homes in the affordable housing market and remodels. Go to MissoulaEvents.net to find out more information. Starts this morning at 10 a.m., so almost a couple more minutes away, but of course, if you've seen this afternoon, too bad, so sad. Um, Missoula Public Library Parklet is happening at 10 a.m. basically all day. This happened from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Missoula Public Library will be hosting a library parklet hosted, um, and this is through the Missoula Downtown Partnership on Higgins Avenue in downtown Missoula featuring technology activity hosted by Makerspace Board Games to play a watercolor uh, painting class demonstration and other activities. Drop by and learn about some of the things that make your library so much more than a book. And of course, if you have any questions about the new library, um, they're going to um, uh, apparently, rumor has it is that they're going to rename the library. It's not going to be called Missoula Public Library when they uh, have MCAT, uh, Families First Children's Museum, Spectrum Discovery Center, and a bunch of other things under one roof. Uh, that was their slogan. That's their mantra. It's like all under one roof. But if they name the library that, it's going to be it's going to be uh, rebel, 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 rebel. But anyways, uh, Pet Rocks. Speaking of Family First Children's Museum, is happening from 11 a.m. to 11:30 p.m. Uh, basically teach your kids that uh, sometimes rocks are better than actually having a living animal that you end up taking care of and your kids like this is my pet it's like no you don't really take care of your pet anyways a creative way for kids to turn stones into rock crafts that resemble animals that's 11 to 11 30 at families for children museum tween teen art after school program art is magic at Zootown Arts Community Center starting at 3.15, or basically whenever kids get around to going out there after school, they're being transported to imaginary world of witchcraft and wizardry in this tween teen after school camp. Students will explore a variety of media during this camp, including, but not limited to, book building, metal smithing, and jewelry making. Um, but if you're not interested in getting hands-on, why don't you uh, sit back with a nice book, teens, with Teen Writers Group at 3.30 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. It happens every Friday from 3.30 to 5 30 p.m. It's basically a great way for them just to hang out at the Museum Public Library and just have a nice quiet place to read. Um, Red Shoe Ball at Hilton Garden Inn. Red Shoe Ball is slated by the, one of the most widely anticipated well attended events of the year. Join them for the music by the Big Sky Mudflaps, Dancing Auction, Food Drink, and Red and White Fun. This isn't your ordinary gala. Be prepared for a uh, red shoe stomping good time. And th here are some of the events. They have the red carpet photo, raddest red shoe selfie contest, specialty red dessert and cocktail, so a lot of velvet cupcake stuff, um, red shoe uh, stomp dancers, and so much more. And all proceeds events stay here right in Missoula, and they allow uh, – um, RMHC of Western Montana to uh, continue the mission of keeping families with sick children close to each other and the care and resources they need when it matters the most. Cinderella, Cinderella is at MCT Center for Performing Arts on at 6 p.m. tonight. A hilarious new twist on the fairy tale classic. The Missoula Children's Theater hosts the annual Theater for Youth Audiences, offering TYA up is a professional theater f uh, featuring adult actors and specifically produced for K through 8 audiences. So these are adult professional actors performing for kids who are um, in the grades K through 8. With the help of some friends, of course, if you're young at heart, you can do it anytime, whatever, it's great. Um, MCT does a lot of great stuff, and uh, they're doing, uh, so basically, if you know what, Cinderella is, finds her way to uh, solutions for her problems when her mean-spirited stepsisters, um, and of course, performances will be um, tonight. So I guess tonight is the only night you guys get to check it out. It happened last night at 6 p.m. So tonight at 6 p.m. will be your last chance to check it out. Um, these are kind of like the preliminary kind of uh, events that are happening at MCT just before they kick off Mamma Mia, which will be their very first season season opener for the Missoula Community Theater, which will be basically taking over MCT for weeks to come. Um, that basically wraps up everything on your Friday night. Let's talk about Saturday. The Farmer's Market, People's Market, and, of course, the Clark Fork River Market are still going strong, and they'll be going well until the end of October. Um, so this happens from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Get some veggies, get some things, hang out with some friends, see some 
familiar faces. Um, you can join that anytime. You don't have to show up every single weekend, but I have. Um, it's great. It's just a, a wonderful thing. Um, welcoming week. Um, there's doing a uh, entry and coffee ceremony at 9 a.m. It's going to be at the Greek Orthodox Church. Um, Join um, Soft Landings. Um, entry. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally butchering that name. Don't listen to me. Um, but from one to el- from 9 to 11 a.m. the uh, the uh, Greek Orthodox Church, uh, which is located at 300, 301 South Sixth Street West, Missoula. Um, Join them for a traditional coffee ceremony, which involves hand roasting, grinding the beans, and brewing a strong um, coffee before enjoying a delicious cup sitting in front of the traditional serving table. Come learn a bit about the uh, Eritrean culture. And if you uh, if you get your coffee fix, admission is free with a suggested donation to benefit participating families along with Soft Landing Missoula. Spontaneous construction is happening at Home Resource pretty much all day tomorrow, um, starting at 9 a.m. and it goes until about 7 p.m., which they'll have an auction. We'll be auctioning off some of the spontaneous construction items that people from different organizations have built. Uh, it's designed to inspire culture cu- culture of reuse with a free, engaging community activity. Spontaneous construction, or SponCon for short, has become an annual Missoula tradition. Contest participants have seven hours to use their choice of home resource materials to build the most beautiful, functional, and creative pieces they can dream up. And this will be happening pretty much all day. But of course, also that's happening all day at the historic a museum at Fort Missoula is doing a fall harvest festival. Join them for their annual fall festival. Try to your hands at cider making with Old Fashioned Apple Press. Visit Hayes Homestead Cabin to find out what kinds of things people did in the autumn to prepare for winter. And they also have tours and other buildings, a couple of fall themed crafts, and they'll have um, a chameleon food truck on the ground so you can buy some lunch when you are there. Free admission and they ask you to bring non-perishable food items for the Missoula Food Bank. Um, for donations as well, if you don't want to, if you want to donate money, you're more than welcome to. Um, but you, they're also taking some non-perishable food items for the Missoula Food Bank. Saturday night, Hellgate Roller Derby Home Bout Season Seven Bout Three. Um, for the last couple of years, um, Hellgate Roller Girls have uh, promoted full contact female sports on wheels. Um, so basically, they'll be taking on the Roller Hills Derby Dames from Pullman, Washington, in the third home um, bout of Season Three. The main event begins at 7:30. Um, at the Missoula County Fairgrounds Outdoor Events Arena, September 16th. The pre-event begins at 5.30 as Missoula's junior team, the Hellgate Hellions, face off with the Wheat Whackers, also from Pullman, Washington. And this is $10 a ticket, and they're available online and at the door. Students and seniors for $8, and kids 12 and under are free. So those are some of the things that are happening as well as the IWW Benefit Show at Free Cycles is happening at 7 p.m. So um, Free Cycles always have a, a lot of wonderful events that happen basically from 7 p.m. to about 10, 10.30, and it's a great, and they have a great lineup. It's Rooster Sauce, Tiny Plastic Stars, Mermaid Book Club at Free Cycles, and you can do some sweet tunes while supporting your local Free Cycles. Um, the donations, um, all sorts of wonderful things. Um, da, 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 and the proceeds go to uh, educating workers on how to organize their workplace and improve their working co- um, um, condemnation. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. The industrial workers of the world have been around for 100 years, and they are currently engaged in organizing in workers in all prisons, in, in incarcerated workers in all prisons in Montana, and they're also fighting for a $15 an hour minimum wage at the u- and a union for all workers. Um, if you aren't a boss, you can join. So this is uh, Missoula IWW at gmail.com, or you can go to IWW.org for more information about this event that's happening at Free Cycles. Here are some of the uh, nightly events that are happening um, in terms of music. If you're a bar uh, night owl, um, here are some of the things that are happening. You got some um, Mark DeMarco is going to be at the Wilma Theater at 7 p.m. Ida Ranch Hands is going to be at the Union Club. Andrea Harcel and uh, Luna Roja album release party at the Top Hat Lounge is going to be R&B music um, tonight. Uh, so uh, then later on we have uh, Salsa 406 is going to be at uh, Dark Horse uh, Saturday night. Absolutely with Chris Moon will be at the Ballander also Saturday night. These are all Saturday night events. I'm going to keep on saying Saturday. So UHF is going to be playing at the Roxy. If you like public access movies, uh, public access television like what we're on, UFC is the movie for you, which basically highlights public access. Uh, Karaoke Pike Kaleidoscope is going to be at VFW Bar. Cash for Junkers is going to be at the Union Club. And 
uh, Avery Fest is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge to promote uh, Mike Avery, who is who is suffering from cancer. And he w can use any kind of support you guys can offer him. And he's going to be at the Top Hat Lounge at 1015, basically all night long. And he won't, uh, well, hopefully he, he won't be made to run the audio. So we'll see. <laughs> So anyways, let's talk about some um, things that are happening Sunday, Sunday Streets. W Sunday is a big day. There's a lot happening Sunday, and as you saw from the interview that I did, Sunday Streets kicks off Walk and Roll Week. Um, Sunday Streets is where they close Higgins Avenue from 12 to 4 p.m. to basically have a whole bunch of fun activities on the street and on the bridge just to kind of hang out and enjoy some outdoor activities. And the weather should be just perfect for you guys to be out in the partly sunny um, skies, highs of 68. It's just going to be beautiful. But also, most people don't know, but um, Sunday, and it's about the fall season, you know you know, it's really fall when the uh, Missoula Cemetery is going to be hosting Stories and Stones. Um, the Missoula Cemetery presents Stories and Stones, annual historical tour. Um, bring the dead back to life while we get uh, people to represent the dead as they read from their diaries, l do some research about their past, and basically talk about everything about the person during their life. So what they did during their life, and even that you get to hear from um, a man who's basically, pr uh, who's uh, read for C.P. Higgins, who is the founder of um, the city of Missoula, one of the founders, and uh, tell his history and his account on his terms about how History was made in Missoula and his rivalry with David Bonner, so uh, who founded Bonner and had the uh, mill and everything. So there's a lot of history, a lot of great things, and you can learn to learn a lot about Missoula. And that's happening pretty much Sunday, 12:30 at the Missoula Cemetery. You can't miss it. It's on the north side. You basically go up the north side. You take that uh, one left. Uh, right past the park and you keep going down there and, uh, and just as you hit along the uh, railroad track you'll basically see a cemetery to your right. Uh, Mary Glime is one of my favorite uh, stories in stones for sure because she's so sassy especially the actress who plays her. Um, but if you're interested in acting yourself auditions for the Rocky Horror Show Live every year Missoula does a, a live Rocky Horror Show and in Mask Studios from 1 to 4 p.m. they're doing um, basically um, auditions you they'll basically train you they will show you this and that the whole idea is they expect to be there pretty much all day from one to four and it's an event that basically uh brings community of missoula together with kind of like an, a counter anti-culture anti-establishment kind of like show where it's very sexy very just like all over the place so it's gonna be wonderful there's no uh pre preparation required all roles are paid um bring both sneakers and heels um dress to move but feel free to uh show us their s show them your style um have a special talent bring what you need to show off your stuff participants should plan on uh, being auditions for the entire three hours and they may be asked to remain afterwards for callbacks rehearsals or run um, Sunday through Thursday events starting uh, basically um, October 1st, and the performances will be October 27th and 28th at the Wilma Theater. If you have any questions, go to Rocky Horror Missoula at gmail.com. So that basically wraps up every event that's happening in and around the city of Missoula. Um, most things don't really happen um, Sunday nights. Maybe they have a couple karaoke things here and there. But it looks like Mozart in Paris is going to be at the University of Montana. It's going to be some music events by the the um, Fine Arts Music Department and opening concert for the String Orchestra. So if you go to MissoulaEvents.net, you can see this wonderful thing. Mozart in Paris opening concert in the String Orchestra of the Rockies 33rd season. Swiss-born American pianist Gilles uh, Zettel, um, representative of the Avery Fisher um, Career Grant and winner of the Nambarg uh, Geneva competition joins the joins an enhanced SOR in this exciting season opener. And this is going to be happening tonight. So to find out more information, you can also go to grizzsticks.com to basically find out all that and where you can get tickets for this show as well. But of course, most people just go there and just get tickets there. It, it makes sense. You know, I don't, ex don't expect, I don't expect most things to get sold out for the most part. You know, Missoula is fairly small, but it's not too big where most things do get sold out. But if things have been sold out in the past, you might want to get tickets beforehand. So MissoulaEvents.net is the source for everything um, Missoula events. For everything um, Wake Up Missoula, you go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. I do have to update some of the uh, um, taglines and photos and stuff like that. But I just want to say thank you to uh, my guests for joining me this morning. Um, 
that was Lindsay Norman and Catherine Auger, who were talking about Sunday Street. So once again, I want to thank you guys for joining me. I do have a wonderful song prepared for you guys, so I'm going to play that for you. And uh, thanks for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thank you.